Psalm 133. The Bible says, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garments. As the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the good singing. Thank you for the amazing grace of God. Lord, I'm glad we once were lost, but now have been saved by the good grace of God. Lord, we're an undeserving, unworthy people, but we're a grateful people. Lord, that you not only saved us, you didn't leave us where you found us. And God, I'm glad you're not leaving us here, but you're taking us to glory one day. I'm glad for the blessed hope of God. Now, Father, I pray you'd help your people tonight. I realize it's Wednesday night. Really, I, as many of them have worked hard this week and even this day. Lord, I realize being in this world that, God, they have to deal with a lot of things. But, Lord, they're here tonight. I pray you'd help them. I pray you'd just breathe grace to their soul tonight. And God, I certainly do pray for those that are watching. They're providentially hindered, couldn't be here. You'd bless them tonight. Now, Father, help us from the Word of God. Increase our faith. Lord, transform us into thy likeness. God, send revival these days. God, help us to get so full of God that the community has to take notice. And they start coming out to see what God's doing around here. Bless now. Use this unworthy vessel. Meet every need of every heart and life. We'll bless you for it. For it's in the wonderful name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. I want you to notice what the Bible says is precious. In verse number 1 it says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. It's precious. It's good. It's pleasant for the brethren to dwell together in in unity. Can I say Jesus loved the church and he gave himself for it. Amen. Ephesians 5 says, Husband, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Can I say Jesus is fond of his church? Can I say Jesus is the founder of the church? Jesus gave us the foundation for the church, the Word of God. Jesus supplied a fountain for his church. And can I say that Jesus is a friend to his church? And can I say it's God's will and it's pleasant in God's eyes and it's precious to God when his church, the brethren, dwell together in unity. I'm glad tonight we didn't come up to the house of God and are facing a warfare. I'm glad we could come in uh, and we could worship. Uh, I'm glad there's no stump star worship to get in the way. Uh, I'm glad there's no uh, big eyes and little U's around here. Uh, I'm glad that folks come together. Uh, they love one another because uh, what Christ has done in their heart and life, uh, they care and want to see everybody else get it. Uh, hey, they come tonight uh, excited to see the brethren. Uh, uh, they didn't come to avoid the brethren. Uh, they didn't come uh, uh, disgusted with the brethren. Uh, but they came praying, uh, came seeking to meet with God because uh, they knew there'd be an environment uh, uh, that would please God uh, where we could come out and God do a work in our midst. Uh, it's precious. How many preachers have you heard stand behind this pulpit and say what you find here you don't find everywhere? It's precious. It's a pleasant thing. It's a good thing to be unified. I want you to see that, but I want you to see the precious ointment. Verse number 2. He said, It's pleasant and good for the brethren to dwell together in unity. It's like a precious ointment upon the head that ran down the beard, even Aaron's beard. That ointment's a picture of the Holy Ghost. You see, if you don't have unity, 
you don't have unction. Where there's not the brethren dwelling together in unity, uh, the Spirit of God can't move. You can't have wonderful services. You have tight services. You have dead services. You have friction. You have division. Can I say the Holy Ghost is always a uniter. The devil is a divider. Mm -mm. But then I want you to notice, if you will, the product of unity and unction. Verse 3, as the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. See, there's blessing when there's unity and unction. And he uses an illustration. He uses Mount Hermon. Now, I did some study some time back. And he says the dew ran off of Hermon. That dew runs off of Hermon, and right below Hermon is a valley. They say the most fruitful orchards in the world are in that valley. Can I say, where there's unity and unction, there's blessing, there's fruitfulness. There's a product that comes from that. And my dear friends, that's the product I'm looking for, revival. I'm looking for some fruit. I'm looking to see souls saved. I'm looking to see prodigals get right with God. I'm looking forward to seeing God's people uh, uh, that may have lost their joy get their joy back. What I'd like to focus on is verse 2. Now notice what the Bible says. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garments. Now from time to time, somebody will come forth and call for the elders of the church to anoint them with oil. In accordance to James chapter 5. Now can I say a lot of Baptist churches don't participate in that. Uh, friend, if you're going to believe John 3.16, you've got to believe James chapter 5. Mm -mm. You can't pick and choose what you want to believe in the Bible. But can I say, most independent Baptist churches, you're never going to hear them preach on David dancing before the ark. Because dancing's wicked. You're never going to hear them preach on that. You're never going to hear them preach on James chapter 5 to anoint with oil, because uh, that's what the charismatics do every service. Yep. And so they don't want to be uh, named charismatic and be called Pentecostal. So we just will avoid that. Hmm? But yet, can I say that the Bible called me to preach the whole counsel of the Word of God, uh, which means you don't avoid it. Uh, you study it, see what it means, and then you preach it. Uh, and can I say there is no power in the oil. The power is in the faith uh, of people uh, uh, praying over the one that is asking for prayer. Uh, the Bible says the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Uh, can I say... Uh, we from time to time somebody will ask that I'll never forget in revival meeting here a couple years ago Miss Lynn came forward to ask us to anoint her with oil and pray over her she's having a problem with her throat and we prayed over on that Monday night and on Thursday night she got up and sang uh, uh, don't tell me that there's something not to, you know, nothing to all that huh? but can I say this uh, anytime you've seen that You'll see the preacher dip the oil over on his finger and just put a little bit on the forehead. That's what we think of when we think about anointing with oil because that's the way we've seen it. But the Bible says when they anointed the, the high priest, even Aaron, they poured it on his head and it ran down his beard. Uh, you're working on a beard. He had one and messed it up and had to cut it all off. I'm envious. I could not shave for three years and not get that, huh? But it ran down his beard. And the Bible says, even down to the skirts of the hem of his garment, all the way down to his feet. I mean, they poured so much oil on him, uh, it just ran all over him. Uh, uh, can I say, uh, if you would, he got satur satur saturated uh, with the oil. Mm, the oil again is a picture of the Holy Ghost. I want to preach on this thought for a minute tonight. I want to preach on, when was the last time you were saturated? 
Mm-mm. Let me help you something. I'm glad you're here. But when was the last time you were saturated? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. This is what Jeremiah said in chapter 31. In verse 14 he says, And I will satiate the soul of the priest with fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my goodness, saith the Lord. In verse 25 he says, For I have satiated the weary soul, and I have replenished every sorrowful soul. So can I say, if we're going to have the blessings and goodness of God, if we're going to have our sorrowful souls lifted, it takes saturation. Uh, Friend, if you come and you don't get saturated, you're going to leave just as miserable as you came. When was the last time you got saturated? Hmm? You say, what are you talking about, preacher? When was the last time you got saturated with Him? You see, saturation is a product of infatuation. When was the last time you got so infatuated with him, uh, it ran all over you? Hmm. It's amazing. We can, get, we can get infatuated with all kinds of things. We can get infatuated with cars, with teams, with... Uh, uh, TV shows with movie stars we can get infatuated with our jobs we can get infatuated with our yards we can get infatuated with our homes uh, we can get infatuated with our children uh, we can get infatuated with everything going on in the world but Jesus Mm. Uh, I don't know but I kind of think Brother Donald when he got up here and sang he he had a little infatuation going on in his soul uh, I'd rather somebody get up and sing like that than have a quartet all dressed alike. Every note harmony perfect. Uh, and dead than four o'clock. Are you listening? Mm. I, I'd rather have Miss Bella get up and sing. With, I don't know if that's Carrie Underwood backing her up or who, but whoever it was. I'd rather her get up and sing uh, because she loves Jesus. But when was the last time you just went out in the morning, you looked up, saw a beautiful sky, and thought, wow, the Lord did this. And then you got to look beyond the sky and started looking for Him. Uh, when's the last time your thought process was how wonderful He is? How undeserving you are? Hmm? Uh, Miss Nett, every sun warm, we're getting ready, she's playing songs and there's one song she's playing. I know my family's going to learn it because I can't get it off my mind. But the last line is that he is mindful of me. It's easy for me to look and see how great he is. I have a real problem with what he looks and sees in me. Uh-uh. When you get to thinking about what you are and he loves you anyway, it's not too hard to get infatuated with him. When's the last time you were saturated with Him? Where your first thought was Him, your last thought was Him. Throughout the day, your thoughts were about Him. Uh, when's the last time you were just saturated with Him? See, when, when you're saturated with Him, everybody else takes note. Well, I could take you over in Acts where they beat them and everything, and they said they took note that they'd been with Jesus. Hmm. When was the last time anybody took note that you'd been with Jesus? When was the last time you was infatuated with Him? When was the last time you was infatuated by the Holy Ghost? I preached one time years ago on when was the last time you had a fit? When was the last time the Holy Ghost got all over you, you just couldn't control you no more? See, uh, you can always tell when people are in control of themselves. They got it all together. But when the Holy Ghost moves in on you, you're liable to lose your dignity. Ladies, your mascara is liable to run a little bit. Fellas, uh, you big old bold, uh, strong, strapping men, you're liable to cry a little bit. Hmm? Uh, You're liable to throw a hand up. You're liable to shout. Uh, I've seen some get so saturated they take a lap. Uh, 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 Listen, uh, when was the last time uh, you got so saturated by the Holy Ghost you just lost control and let Him take over, huh? Mm. I'll just ask you, when was the last time you was saturated? Mm. 
When's the last time you saturated with hope? Man, you look around this world. How did America get this bad this fast? I mean, how, how did we get there? And then, then the Durham report come out this week, and everything that we already knew, it's finally, what are they going to do with it? For four years, they blamed Trump for a bunch of stuff that Hillary did, and now they have the facts up. What are they going to do? Same thing they did when they knew before. Nothing. I got good news. There's a judge coming. And he said, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. But you get to look around this country. Man, it's a mess. You get to looking around at churches. They're a mess. You get to looking at homes. They're a mess. I mean, everything's a mess. The roads are a mess. Uh, just everything needs help. Well, if you get to your eyes on all that, you're going to walk on your lower lip a whole lot. What you need is you need a good dose of hope. Uh, and when you get in the book, and you get infatuated with Jesus, and you get saturated by the Holy Ghost, uh, you get to realize that this world is not our home. Uh, you get to realize that in our homeland, everything's fine. Uh, in our homeland, there are no troubles. Uh, uh, in our homeland, uh, hey, there's a crystal river, streets of gold, walls of jasper, gates of pearl, uh, and the Lord himself the light of the city. Uh, in our homeland, uh, there is no more curse. Uh, in our homeland, nothing's broken. Everything's perfect because uh, it was fastened by his perfect hand. Uh, hey, uh, you get a little hope that he's a coming uh, and he could come today. Uh, all your wrongs will be righted. Uh, everything will be all right. Uh, hey, uh, you can go on another mile when you got some hope. Yeah. When was the last time you saturated with hope? Huh? Thought about this. When was the last time you were saturated with helplessness? It'd be a great day in our lives when we just get helpless and take our hands off of it and give it to Him. Huh? When we realize we can't handle it, we can't control it, we can't work it out to the best, when it's far too big for us, that's a good place to be in. When you get saturated with helplessness, you just get a good dose of dependence. And the more you depend on Him, the bigger He shows up. Amen. I've learned this, Brother Josh. If you think you can handle it, He'll let you try. It's a good day when you just throw up your hand and say, Lord, this is too big for me, but it's not too big for you. Uh, when you get saturated with helplessness, it'll change your life. Listen, back 100 years ago when I was in the business world, I used to train salesmen. And Brother Brian, starting out, I'd always tell him this, don't be afraid to tell people you're new. Don't try and fake it and act like you're better and you know something when you don't know anything. Don't try and make up an answer. Just tell them, I'm new at this. Just started. If you got any questions, I'll go find the answer and come back to you. I said, what happens is when you tell people you're new, they have patience with you. Matter of fact, they actually want to help you out. They want to help out the new guy. You know? And so they're patient, they're tolerant, and you'll do better. I had this one guy, he learned that secret. He was with three years later still telling people, I'm new at this. <laughs> he learned a secret. Here's the secret. Tell the Lord you can't, but He can. Don't be ashamed. Don't try and fake it. Don't make it. fake it till you make it. Don't try and figure it out. Don't assume you got the answers. Just tell the Lord I need help. I can't handle it. And watch and see how big He shows up in your life. 
The secret to God is not going up. The secret to God's going down. The lower you get, the bigger he gets. When was the last time you just saturated with helplessness? Mm. You see, and I'm studying the Bible, and I'm depending on what I know. I don't get nothing out of the Bible. I don't know how many times I've crawled up in the lap of the Lord and said, God, I ain't got any answers. And your people are going to come to the house of God with questions. God, I need to hear something from you. Lord, I don't have it. I don't know. Lord, I'm a zero. God just all of a sudden shows up and throws it out there. And I'm writing with one hand and thanking him with the other. Huh? When was the last time you just realized without him you can do nothing? I thought about this. When was the last time you saturated with hunger? Hmm. Now that Christian's married off and gone and Sid's moved out and Jordan works late, you know, it's just usually me at the house till Miss Nett gets home. Used to, she'd always come up with something real easy to fix on Wednesday night so I could put it together because if you know me, that me and the kitchen don't get along. Uh, we don't speak the same language. So she'll usually have just something I can heat up. And so that me and Christian, Sydney, and Jordan, before we work late, we could have something to eat for church on Wednesday night. Well, they're gone, and he don't come home. So she said last night, she said, here, why don't you, why don't you fix this skyline tomorrow for, for dinner for church? I'm thinking, why? It's just me. You know, because I snack all day long anyway. Well, I didn't fix skyline. She said, oh, yeah, that's right. I said, we'll just eat afterwards. Well, I got hungry. I thought, nah, I'll just wait. Miss Annette calls on the way home from work. She said, I'm weak. I'm, i I got to eat something before we go to church tonight. She said, I need to, I, I, I wish you to fix that dinner because I, I need to fix that when I get home because I'm, I'm just, she said, I'm shaky. So I said, I'll go start the water, you know, because I can boil water. <laughs> what are you trying to say? I normally don't eat on Wednesday night for a preach because then I'm built the whole time I'm preaching. But I was hungry. If you don't nourish yourself properly, you can't get the job done. So I had a cheese cone for it. I came to church tonight. What I'm trying to say is, when was the last time you were saturated with hunger? I'm talking about a hunger for a move of God. Amen. We're blessed we have good services. Yes, but I'd like to see a move of God. Yes, Amen. I'd like to see where He just settles in. and I like it when you come to church and you don't know what's going to happen. Yes, and you just keep coming back not knowing what's going to happen. Now, that makes some people nervous because they like everything structured. But see, you cannot program and structure the Holy Ghost. He does what He does. And I sure like it when He does it. When was the last time you hungered for a move of God? Huh? Can, can I say, when God gets to moving, the singing's better. The testimonies are better. The fellowship is better. The drive to church is better. Huh? And the preaching's a whole lot better. Especially if the Holy Ghost does it. Uh, when was the last time you saturated with hunger for a move of God? When was the last time you had a hunger for multitudes to be saved? Well, I want to see everybody that requested prayer for somebody to get saved tonight. I want to see every one of them saved. Times a thousand. I just going down the road looking people's cars and see the lostness in their eyes. 
Well, I'd like to see him saved. I'd like to see such a move of God that when we show up, they're outside waiting to get in to come and hear how to be saved. See, I've read about move of God where people would get to the church house, the doors had flung open, and they'd fall down in the back and begging somebody to show them how to get saved because they're just driving by the house of God. They got on their conviction so bad they knew they needed God. I've never seen that, but I sure would like to. Wouldn't it be wonderful if it was known throughout the world that Florence, Kentucky, everybody here was saved? I've never known anywhere where everybody was saved. But wouldn't it be wonderful if it was Florence, Kentucky? He is able. The reason it hasn't happened is we don't believe he's able. Well, when was the last time you had a hunger? See, see if you've got a hunger to see somebody saved, you'll tell somebody how to get saved. Uh, you know how it is every time I start talking about places where I like to eat, y'all get hungry, don't you? Hmm. Well, when you when you've tasted of it, you tell others about it. You get saturated with hunger. You'll tell others about how to be saved. Thought about this? How about a hunger for the medullary of holiness? That word medullary means inward holiness. When was the last time you hungered to be holy? When you hungered to be more like Him. I'm not talking about just think about it. Where you hungered, you longed to be more like Him. Boy, it got real quiet right there. Boy, we, we like that heaven stuff, but we don't like that holiness stuff. So that gets down to where we live. You start hungering for holiness, guess what's going to happen? You're going to have to get some things out of your life. You have to change some things. Mm. Listen. There's something about holiness. Cleanness. That's when folks start recognizing you've been with Jesus. You start looking like him. You start sounding like him. You start loving like him. Hmm? You start walking like him. There's something about that cleanness. This world don't see that. Hmm? This world don't understand that. It amazes me how much terminology today that is slang and that is accepted and that is used that when I was coming up it was considered cuss words. See, the world isn't getting any cleaner. Mm -mm. Huh? There's things said today by young people that I'd got my mouth mashed over. I'd had to stick out my tongue and got it washed with soap. Anybody ever have that? Huh? Come here, Joseph. Come here. Come right here. This is a model kid right here. Kids, talk to Joseph about what it is getting your mouth washed out with soap it was real pleasant wasn't it no <laughs> I said something one time that was said on the Waltons everybody remember the Waltons huh that's about as home, uh, homely shows you're going to find little Elizabeth said something and I repeated it my mama took me in stuck out my tongue I mean she lathered it up I was spitting soap for a week Holiness is a foreign thing today. There's just something about being clean. And people can tell when you live a life different than them. And can I say most people, in their soul, they're longing for something like that. They just don't know it's possible because they haven't seen it. Not a hunger for holiness. Tell you why people aren't saturated. Because of their earthly passions. 
If you had heavenly passions, you'd be saturated. They're not saturated because they have empty prayer closets. We can talk to everybody but God. Hmm. I wonder how much our church would change if we would just an hour a day turn off everything. I didn't tell you throw it away. Just turn it off and talk to God. It transform our church. Just an hour a day. Hmm. If you're honest, most people don't pray 15 minutes a day. Collectively. What if we took an hour a day, turned off everything, just talked to God? Hmm. We're not saturated because of envious pursuits. We're jealous somebody's got something, so we pursue something better. You know the best thing you can ever pursue? Jesus. Hmm. In order to be saturated, you got to ask to be saturated. James 4, verse 2, You lust and have not, you kill and desire to have and cannot obtain, you fight in war, yet you have not, because you ask not. You ask and receive not, because you ask amiss, that you may consume it upon your lusts. John 16, 24 says, Hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. Ask, and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. You're not saturated because you haven't asked God to saturate you. Hmm. In order to be saturated, you not only have to ask for it, you've got to aspire for it. Matthew 6.33, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. You've got to wake up every day. God, I just want to be full of you. You've got to aspire for it. You've got to ask for it. In order to be saturated, you've got to become accountable. You can't hit and miss. You've got to be persistent. You can't want to be saturated on Sunday and not Monday. 1 Corinthians 4, 2, Moreover, it's required in stewards that a man be found faithful. You want to be saturated, you've got to be accountable. You've got to be faithful. You've got to give an account to God every day. You'll be faithful for the Lord every day. So let me ask you the question. When was the last time you saturated? Why don't you start tonight? Hungry. Seeking. Longing. Asking. To be saturated. I promise you, if from now to Sunday, you start asking and aspiring to be saturated with God, you take an hour a day to just talk to God. It may be in 15-minute increments. Take an hour a day. Talk to God. Between now and Sunday, you come in Sunday, there's no telling what God will do here. But it starts with a desire to be saturated. Well, I'd like to see the Holy Ghost flowing off all of us from our head to our toe. That's what they did with Aaron. That precious ointment. No telling what God will do. If we let him saturate us. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song. Some are already coming. You've heard the message. Now what are you going to do with it? We're picking our song. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Oh, how we need you. God, help us to become helpless before you. God, give us a hope and a hunger. God, saturate us with you and the Holy Ghost. Oh, God, do a work in our lives. God, you be glorified with our lives. That others would see the greatness of God in our lives. God, do something in the hearts of your people. Help us to aspire for holiness, righteousness, godliness in this present day that we live in. Oh, God, do work. Help your people to seek you like never before. Oh, God, saturate us, change us, transform us, revive us, that God others may come to know you. 
and we'll bless you for what you do. Have your will and way in this invitation. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.